On today's episode of the Network for Women in Business podcast, I get the unique opportunity to talk to Maria Wendt, who is an amazing female entrepreneur that's teaching others how to attract their ideal customers and clients online. She's going to walk us through her process of finding and working with her ideal customers. It's pretty amazing, and I know you're going to love it. So get ready to hear from Maria Wendt. All right. Welcome, Maria. I'm so excited to have you on and to be doing this interview because you are in the female entrepreneur space doing great things. And I checked out your Facebook group. You are just growing it drastically. It looks like it's growing pretty fast. And why don't you just tell the audience a little bit about yourself, what you do, how long you've had your business, and you know what's your magic as it relates to working with female entrepreneurs. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, you know, as uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Maria Wendt, um, and I help female entrepreneurs get more clients online. That's sort of my. Um, I'm not sure if for those of you guys that haven't read the book, um, The Big Leap. But in The Big Leap, they talk about the fact that. Each one of us has a zone of genius, something that we're really, really good at, and that that's what we should, you know, make make our lives work, right? That's our zone of genius, the thing that we should spend our time doing. And over the course of the years, I've come to realize that my zone of genius is in helping other business owners get more clients online. So I've been doing that for about six years now, um, and I really have to say that it's been, as I step further and further into my zone of genius, I just see a greater impact and more personal fulfillment for me. So I'm very, you know, some people say that they're slightly obsessed with their work. I'm, I'm very obsessed with what I do and what I'm able to help other women accomplish. So getting more clients online, I have found that that is absolute one of the major things that most entrepreneurs are looking to do right now. What are some of the major strategies that you suggest for female entrepreneurs? So like take me a little bit through the process of, you know, how you work with them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So let's say you and I, we decided to work together. We would do that over a 90-day process. Um, and we would, you know, I always like to say that, you know, because every business owner is unique, every one of the women that I work with is unique, that means that what works for them in their business is going to be unique. So their strategies are going to be a little bit different um, from mm -hmm. business because what motivates you and gets you excited and gets, you know, really works for you and your business isn't going to work for the next person. So, um, you know, we like to say it's not a one size fits all. It is a little bit customized, but in general, um, I teach entrepreneurs how to do what I call organic marketing. So that's not paid advertising. Um, it's, it's, um, organic marketing and that really organic marketing comes out of two things. The first is to build relationships and the second is to provide value. And what I found is that, you know, how you build relationships and how you provide value that does look different from business owner to business owner. Owner, but in some way, every person who's successfully utilizing organic marketing is doing some kind of relationship building and some kind of providing value. That's awesome. That's awesome. And now, as it relates to building relationships, how do you help entrepreneurs build relationships online? Because the internet can be so cold in the beginning. And sometimes when people reach out to you, they can seem or sound a little bit spammy. How do you help them do that in a way that is just genuine and it come, comes across as authentic? Because I think that so many of us have been on the other end of a really spammy salesy message and it just it makes us feel icky um it doesn't feel good it doesn't make us want to buy it right it doesn't even work um so i love that you raised that point and um I'll, i have two sort of answers to that the first one is um you, you use the keyword there it's authentic right so i teach my clients to remember that there is a person on the other side of the screen and don't say something don't send a message that you would actually say to someone in, in real life right so we want to be authentic um but the second more practical thing um, is we do market research, right? So we, you know, we, we do research on your ideal clients, the dream people that you want to work with. And we ask them questions like, what is your biggest challenge? You know, what are some of the things you're struggling with as it relates to the services that I offer? Um, where do you, where are you spending your time online, right? How, what are the, what might the solutions to your problem be? So we ask these really pointed questions on um, which allows us to essentially do our homework when it comes to showing up and serving, you know, uh, my clients 
clients, their ideal clients, their dream clients, um, in a way that actually works. And that allows us to feel really confident as we go out and build relationships because we've done our homework and we know for sure that what it is we're offering, what it is we're, you know, the solutions that we're, we're offering, um, they actually are solving our, our ideal client's exact problems because we've done the market research, we've done our homework. That's a great question. So basically, it's almost as if before you reach out to a person to even strike up a conversation or to, you know, get in a situation where you can pitch what you have to offer, you kind of, um, you know who you're looking for, you know why you're looking for them, and then once you find them, you're doing a little bit of research on them as well, so that when you reach out to them, you're providing some value ahead of time. And so it, it kind of makes them say, huh, that's somebody that I want to talk to. Exactly. Is that how it works? Exactly. And, and you, you said the, the key word there, which was it feels organic. That's why we call it organic marketing, because it's a natural progression where, you know, we're, we're getting to know them. We're building that relationship. We're showing up maybe on Instagram or on Facebook or on LinkedIn, wherever they're spending their time. Mm -hmm. And we're just solving their little problems, right? We're creating content that is useful to them and they're getting to know us and we're building trust with them. Um, and then, you know, the, the relationship gets escalated in some way where it's, it's typically a phone call where we're hopping the phone and we're having a conversation. And again, we're still providing value, right? We're still solving their problems. Um, but at the end, we unashamedly, we unabashedly say, hey, you know, at the end of our call, I'm going to talk a little bit about what it might look like for us to work together. Uh, does that sound good? And then once they agree to that, right, it's just such an organic, very natural, feel good, authentic way to say, hey, this is what it might look like for us to hit our business goals or for us to hit our weight loss goals or, you know, whatever it might be, depending on, on your industry, depending on what it is that you do. Um, it, it just happens in such an organic, natural way where we've already spent that time to, you know, build the relationship and provide the value that by the time we get to the sales pitch, it's an easy yes. It's an easy yes for our mm -hmm. clients and for their drive dream clients as well. So yeah, beautifully summarized. So it sounds like it's, you're not really talking to them about a, you know, a traditional way of just generating leads. You're really more or less saying, listen, let's identify who that ideal client is first. And then, you know, we're not going to work so much on just generating that lead. We're going to really do more outreach. Is it, is it that way or, you know, I think, I think you're, in the, you're on the right direction. The way I like to think about it is we start with the foundational stuff first. So mm -hmm. we really that you've done your homework and you've done your market research your online presence is tweaked to make sure that it's really optimized for the you know the people we're going to be reaching out to um and you know things like maybe you've done a brand photo shoot you kind of build that foundation stuff first but then you know after we've got that in place and that's in about the first two weeks of us working together for the rest of those 90 days that's when we focus on the lead generation and and the actual getting clients and we get really practical when it comes to okay we want to hop on the phone with 10 people this month or you know or this week or whatever your your goals are um that's when we kind of roll up our sleeves and we get really practical but i have seen a lot of entrepreneurs they sort of skip that foundational step and then they spend all this time trying to get those leads but because they haven't done their homework right they haven't got this foundational stuff in place um they're struggling to generate those leads so we like to do the foundational stuff first um, get that in place and then we roll up our sleeves and we do all the different lead generation things yeah you said something that I think I find is key oftentimes when you know uh, entrepreneurs say that they're struggling to get their find their ideal customers or clients when you go to their you know all of their marketing collateral or you go to their digital assets like their websites their Instagram page their Facebook page you cannot tell what they're about you cannot tell what they have to offer because it's all over the place sometimes it's because people have shifted or sometimes it's because they're just really not clear and they're just really not focused have you find found that a lot in the entrepreneurs that you've been working with that's exactly how it is um, and that's why, you know, we, we do like, because like you said, there's sort of a little, and I don't like to be, to be rude or to speak badly of anyone because we are where we are, but yeah. um, we're kind of all over the place. 
and people will go out, you know, one of the things I do is I review their website, I review their Instagram, I review their Facebook, and nine times out of 10, what they have on their website is different than what they have on Instagram, what they have on Instagram is different on Facebook, and it's like, if I was a random person, I would have no idea what it is you actually do, so let's make this cohesive, and let's do it, because, you know, we, we work very hard over the 90 days, we're focused, we, we take advantage of every one of those days, but we don't want to, like, you know, um, focus too much on, on the, the, you know, op, you know, getting our, getting our leads until we get the, the first part done. Cause it's just a waste of time at that point. It's like trying to sail in a boat that has holes in it. Let's plug up the holes. Let's get our, our, let's get our boat ready to sail. And then we'll take off towards the sunset. Maria, this has been great. And you're absolutely right about plugging up those holes, but you know, we're going to take a quick break right now. And, um, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about how long you've been working with entrepreneurs and female entrepreneurs in particular, and just a little bit about how that's been going and what you've been finding out as trends with female entrepreneurs. So we'll be back in a minute. Here is a fun fact, and that is that the Network for Women in Business was originally founded in January of 2012, making it officially seven years old. The motto of the Network for Women in Business is that we educate to elevate women in business. It has been officially responsible for training thousands of women all around the world via its online platform. The network officially reopened its doors for membership on March 18, 2019. And anyone can take the $1 seven day trial and get access to the online training platform, which has amazing trainings on everything from social media to personal development. Right now, trial takers can take advantage of the new signature success system called Focus, Finish, Promote, and Profit, where they can learn how to get clarity and focus and grow their business. Get access to the Network for Women in Business today at www.thenetworkforwomeninbusiness.com. Now, back to the episode. So in your years, and how many years have you been working with female entrepreneurs now or just wow. entrepreneurs in general? Yeah. So I got my, so I, I got my back, you know, my background um, used to be, I worked with a digital media agency for a while and then I wanted to do my own thing. Um, so about six years ago, I kind of, it's hard to believe it's been six years already. Um, but I, I took off and did my own thing about six years ago. Um, and I did work with entrepreneurs um, at first, but I just found that, um, you know, a lot of the people I work with, they're, they're moms who are in nine to fives and they're desperate to leave their nine to fives and be home with their kids. Yeah. Every mother that I help bring home and she's got a thriving business now, like it almost makes me want to like I tear up or I get goosebumps every time because that I have identified is the work that like I was with my purpose. It's why I was put on this earth to do it. Um, and so, you know, that's a, they come a very natural transition for me where I just, I call it out and I say, yeah, I work with female entrepreneurs. Like that's my specialty. Um, and I just, every day I just light up just, uh, yeah, it's, I can't even talk about it. I get a <laughs> it's my passion. It's my purpose. I, I really love it. That's great. Now, what is the one thing that you would say that, or I, let me just rephrase it and say, what is like the biggest mistake that you see entrepreneurs making today? And what would you say to them to correct that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and, and my message is to the, I mostly work with newer entrepreneurs, you know, they, they are, that's mostly who I work with. And so um, a lot of entrepreneurs, unfortunately, they, they see these um, exaggerated messages online where it's like, I made 100K in a month or, you know, like all these, all these things. And unfortunately, if you're new to the game, you just haven't been around long enough to know that, that you'll excuse my language, but it's a bunch of BS. And, and so mm -hmm. um, it's just not... Um, it's not true. It's not reality. And so a lot of my clients are like, Maria, I've been in business for three months. And I just, even myself, when I started, I was like, where's my 20 K months? Like I've been in business for 20 K months, you know? And so I think that there's a little bit of misunderstanding about, you know, I say like one in a million people probably have had that hundred K month, but it's so exaggerated. And you have to look at not sales. Let's look at profits, right? What are these people actually bringing home in their bank accounts? So there's a lot of um, misinformation about um, how much you should be making as a new entrepreneur. So I always try to correct that. Um, and then the other thing I think is that most entrepreneurs just have no idea 
how often you're going to be tempted to give up. Like if you felt like giving up and quitting, you are right there with the rest of us, sister. And let me tell you, as someone that's been in business for six years, I still want to give up sometimes. It does, it never goes away because right. being an entrepreneur is such a personal thing and you're so, it's your baby and you're up with it. Like all the, you know, it's just one of those things you're so personally invested in it. So my advice is don't believe the BS online about making hundred K months. Cause that just doesn't happen. And don't give up, just grit your teeth and don't give up because you'll be so glad that you didn't. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I tell you, I, I agree with that because you're going to want to give up like a hundred times a day. You're going to yeah. want to quit. <laughs> And I think we have shame around that because so many entrepreneurs are like, living my best life. This is amazing. You know, it's all talking about the highlight reel, but no one ever talks about, you know, the, the, the stress attacks that leave you crying on the kitchen floor. I mean, why aren't we, you know, we, we talk, that happens to all of us. I don't know why we don't talk about it. So I kind of am on a mission to, I'm like, I have nothing to lose. I've been around long enough. I'll be fine if I talk about it. And that's, you know, part of what I feel like my purpose is in all of this is just to bring some, some realness and authenticity to this online space. Okay, so now in terms of, you know, getting clients online, what have you found to be one of the best platforms for people to do that? Um, um, for me and for a lot of my clients, it's been Facebook groups. Um, but I do think that Facebook groups, I'm not really sure. It's just getting really hard to get clients in Facebook groups these days. Um, so I and myself and, and my clients are kind of really exploring Instagram. Um, we've been having a lot of luck with Instagram, but I would say it's still split 60% Facebook groups, 40% Instagram. Um, but my advice is to really, if you aren't already, start growing on Instagram um, because I really do see a lot of people moving away from Facebook groups to Instagram. But the thing is, it really does depend on who your ideal clients are, right? Because one of my clients, he works with financial planners. 40% of his leads come from some online publication journal that he's a guest post, you know, writer. And so that's why you got to do the market research is because you have no idea where your ideal clients are hanging out. And you've got to start from that place um, rather than just sort of shooting in the dark and saying, oh, I hope my clients are here. Right, right. I think that you're 110% right. You have to find out where they're hanging out online because it could be in the most obscure places that, you know, you you think you have it, you know, right and you think you have it on Facebook, but Facebook the the ecosystem of Facebook is just changing a lot. I found and you know, even with a large um, fan base, it still seems to be hard to get to the people that, you know, have liked your page or even the people that have joined your Facebook group. Oftentimes it's just because the algorithm changed so much, you just, yeah. you never know who's going to show up even in your feed. You just, you know, you don't know who your ads are really going to get in front of these days. It's just different. It's not the same way it was years ago. Have you found the same thing? No, it's like you're exactly right. When I started my business six years ago, Facebook groups were just getting started. Mm -hmm. And if you were like brave enough to post a picture of yourself in a group, like that's all you needed to do to stand out because everyone was so shy. No one was posting pictures of themselves. So I was one of the first few people that started sharing photos of myself. And like, that's how I grew a following was just being in these Facebook groups share. And like, that was enough. Now it's so big. It's so I've just watched it, you know, expand so dramatically and the Facebook, you know, algorithms, like you said, have gotten harder and harder to even be seen. Um, so really, you know, it just, it comes down to, I find, um, to, to constantly have to fight the algorithms. It's just consistency. Um, and then sort of the other thing I tell all my clients to do is to set a daily sales activity minimum. So you have to figure out, you know, that you're going to accomplish in that day. So one or two tasks that come hell or high water, you are going to be doing every single day and you make a personal commitment to yourself to get it done. So for me, with my sales goals, it's booking two um, sales calls or, you know, discovery sessions um, per day. That's my sales minimum. If I don't hit that, like, we're not cool. I'm not, and I'm not cool with myself because I made a personal commitment um, to make that happen. And I teach that discipline to all of my clients because I find that a lot of us in this entrepreneur space, you know, we're, we're so excited to not be in our nine to five. We're so excited to be quitting. Um, but we forget that we still have to have, uh, we still have to work. We still have to, you know, do our, you know, do our things. And so it's it hard. Yeah. Well, you know, you, the temptation is there's Netflix and ice cream and a million other amazing things at home that we all would rather be doing. Um, but just because you're working for yourself doesn't mean that you can just laze around. Like there are still things you have to do. There's jobs you have to make happen. Um, and so I've helped my clients kind of identify what, their individual daily sales requirement should be and then teaching them to just keep that commitment. Now, what about LinkedIn groups? Have you tried that? 
Yeah, I have. And for a lot of my clients, it's, it's, it works because they're more professional. However, with, with my particular audience, um, not a ton of working mothers are in LinkedIn groups. Um, and so I've had better luck with Facebook groups than Instagram, but again, that's why, you know, it's not a one size fits all. It really depends on where your clients are, um, and doing that market research just to find that out. So now, um, what do you think is the future of this space in working with female entrepreneurs? Because there's so many people coming in. I mean, I started out in 2012 and, you know, I just see the space getting, you know, just a little crowded. But at the same time, you know, there are a lot of good people with good information and quality, you know, courses and content, and they're providing real value. But where do you see this whole space going? What do you think are the trends for the upcoming years? I think that's a good question. And it's something I've actually been thinking a lot about because I think there's very good things happening. There's going to be more entrepreneurs coming in, which I'm so like every working mom that quits her job and like, like, amen, let's bring it in. Um, but I do think there's going to be a lot more regulation. There's going to be a lot more, um, our, our consumers are getting smarter because they're just getting, there's a lot of coaches making all these ridiculous false promises that aren't being delivered on. So consumers are getting smarter, which is a good thing um, mm -hmm. because we want to be investing um, in, in, in things actually going to deliver results. Right. I feel like there's going to be a big, it's a big bubble right now. It's going to burst. Um, which is going to be bad for all the people that aren't delivering on their, you know, what they said they're going to be delivering on. It's not going to be good for the people charging $100,000 for six month coaching, right? That's just ridiculous. That's a ridiculous inflation that just can't last. Um, right. We're going to see, um, you know, people looking for, are you a certified coach? Like, where are your credentials? It's going to be a little bit more regulated, um, which is going to be painful for the people that don't have those credentials. Um, mm -hmm. And it's going to be, it'll be a little bit of a shifting, but overall, that's the thing that will save female entrepreneurs because right now we have all of these people going into debt to pay these like high level coaches and not seeing results. And it's just a big issue in our industry right now. And I'm really seeing a movement towards it getting cleaned up and I'm very happy about it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, have you ever spent a lot of money on a um, high price coach? <laughs> I have. Um, I, I, very, I very much have. I've had mentorships go really well. Um, and I've had mentorships go really badly. Um, and I, I mean, you take responsibility for it, right? It's your investment like that. At the end of the day, the buck does stop with you. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that it's, it was a learning, it was a painful learning experience. Um, and it really taught me um, that there's, you know, the, like the, the coach that I learned the most from was one of the, my least expensive investments, right? Hmm. And so I think that there, there's something to be said. You really want to look at the coaches that are out there charging, I mean, like $50,000 for a six month coaching program, for example, is like, you want to look at that just because it's high ticket doesn't mean it's high value. So do your right. Rate. Don't be afraid to ask for re referrals and actually like follow up and talk to those people. Right. Um, right. And, if they're, and they're making, if they're making income claims, don't be afraid to ask for proof of that. Like if they're claiming to be making a hundred K, like let's, let's see some screenshots or some, you know, videos because yeah, it needs to happen. Our industry needs to be cleaned up a little bit and, and, and we're the consumers, right? We're the ones that need to like to, to, to play a role in that. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think you're 110% right. You know, um, I've definitely had the same experiences with, you know, some high ticket, you know, it's just like, well, what am I paying for now? <laughs> and some things that were not as expensive, I, you know, I think I spent on uh, one course, it was a little just a little small course, maybe I paid 17 bucks for it. And it provided so much value. It was ridiculous. And so I was just like, wow, this is crazy. Like some of these courses are like a thousand dollars and didn't deliver on the promise. And here a $17 course gave me so much value that it was ridiculous. You know, we can relate to that. I think, I think we all can. And what I encourage you to do is go back to that person that taught that course and a like tell them thank you right let them know that like their work um isn't going unnoticed because nine times out of ten the people charging 17 dollars are not the sexy popular in click you know they're the, they're the smaller people that are actually providing value but aren't popular um and then stay in her space or his or her space be like follow them on their social media platforms and subscribe to their newsletter because you're only gonna get more value from them and they're the people you want to surround yourself with so i make it a, a, a point now to just like give them positive feedback let 
let's support the people in our space that are actually doing something of value. And I just unfollow and block and hide and just don't pay any attention to the people I know that are just like beyond bullshitting. I just can't, I, I, just, <laughs> I can't deal with it. Um, because the thing is like so many of my friends get ripped off. Like I had a friend of mine and she spent like eight and a half thousand dollars on this Facebook ad agency and got zero leads from it. And like that wow. all the time, it happens all the time. Um, and so that's why I'm just like, let's encourage the people that are actually making a difference and delivering incredible value because we need more people like that in our industry. Right. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. So now how can people get in contact with you? Yeah. So the, what I recommend that you do is I want, you know, I like want everyone to get to know me a little bit better. So if you just go to my website, I have lots of different like free resources there. I have a, a guide to um, getting clients through Facebook groups. I have another guide where it's like, um, you can get really, I don't like to say as many clients as you want. Um, but it's like, you can really pretty much control how many clients you get with this guide. It's on my website for free. Like that's the kind of things we're, we're looking for in this space. And I want you to learn a little bit more. I may get some value. Um, so if you go to my website, it's mariawent.com. Um, my last name is a little tricky. It's spelled W E N D T. Um, so mariawent.com. I'm sure you, you'll put a link to it, um, in, in the description of the podcast, but there's just a lot of really valuable free things on my website. A lot of blog posts you can read that are really helpful. And it's just a really good way. If you're serious about getting clients, there's enough free resources on my website to get you started. You don't have to pay anything. Just check it all out. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And I will put a link in the show notes for the podcast. So um, is there any one final thought that you would like to leave with the listeners today? Yeah, I think for, for me, um, what I just like to share is someone that like has said the same words to me um, and has made, you know, changed the course of my life is just don't, don't give up. You know, don't be afraid to keep going. You know that this is your dream and your dream was placed on your heart for a reason. So just hold fast to that. And sometimes it will literally take you like, actually, like I've had to grit my teeth and all like being very literal. I've had to literally grit my teeth and keep going just out of sheer stubbornness. And I'm so glad that I did because now six years later, I can't imagine doing anything else. So, you know, like I have to say that to myself continually, even now, six years later, I still have to remind myself not to quit. Um, and I'm always so glad I don't. So you know that it's your dream. You know that you're not going to quit and just keep going. Okay, now um, conferences and live events. Let me ask you a question about that. Are there any that you recommend that individuals attend? Any conferences or live events? Any, you know, have you attended any lately? I have I've attended some, um, I can't say, and again, this just might be where I'm at, you know, having been in business for six years, um, I can't say that like, I have learned anything recently from any live events, just because some of the, I feel like the sessions that I've been going to recently are a little bit um, basic for me. So I'm still on the hunt um, for some good live events. But I will say, um, the one thing I think is really good when it comes to live events is make sure that you actually, if you're going to go and say, oh, I'm going to go for networking purposes, actually network. I know too many people that like go to the sessions and then they go to their hotel room. Let's maximize that financial opportunity and actually go to the networking events, go to the cocktail things, bring business cards. Um, so if you're going to go and you're going to say, hey, it'll be a network thing, actually network. Um, that's something I learned the hard way because I'm a little shy. So I'm definitely like having to train myself to not go to the hotel room. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm on the hunt for one myself. I'm looking for something that just probably scaling, I think for me is my next step is just really like bringing on more team members. And so I'm on the hunt for one. So if you guys don't want to recommend any to me, I would love to. <laughs> I'm going to recommend you come to the small business bootcamp for women. I think I want you to, um, you know, get on the platform and maybe do um, a session there. That's going to be on November 2nd of this year. And that's an event that I host, and it's always a really good event. And I mean, the audience is amazing. And every, you know, every speaker that I put on the platform, what they love about the platform is the fact that they get so many clients from it. <laughs> so every year they like to come and they're like, oh, you know, I got this client, I got that client. So, it, you know, the audience is the right audience. So um, I think that you would be great, yeah. you know. That and you would actually love that. But you know, anybody that's looking to, you know, up level their marketing, they definitely will get what they're looking for if they come to the small business boot camp for women. So I'm excited Ooh, to be posting. Yeah. yeah. This year will be year eight. And I, I just finalized wow. the date. And you know, I have to update my website and everything. And you know, I'm excited. I'm really looking You're forward right. to it. I see the passion and I can literally hear the passion in your voice. That's great. I can <laughs>
I, yeah, yeah, definitely after we after we finish this, I'd love to hear more info on that. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So this has been great and you've been amazing and I'm so excited and you know, I just have to tell you a little story, right? So I was listening to Pat Flynn. I'm sure you've heard of Pat Flynn. And he was doing a webinar on podcasting. And one of the things that he said was, you know, you have to reach out to people and reach out to people that are of influence and ask them if they want to come on your podcast. And I was doing the work. I was doing the work that he actually said that you should do in the, in the, in the webinar. And I, he said, you know, just do a search to find your ideal person. And then when you find them, just reach out to them and, you know, and, and just, you know, just say, hey, you know, da, 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 da. I did the work and that's how I found you. Can you believe that? I was just like, oh, look at her. I was just like, I think we have some synergy. Let me reach out to her. <laughs> I am so glad you did. I think that to anyone who's listening, that is such a classic example of actually implementing. Because yes. I don't know but I think we all struggle with the thing where we, we think if we just listen to the instruction, somehow that'll show the results in our business. But no, you implemented and yep. that's how you got the results that you wanted to see. And I think that's such a good reminder for me. And I think for all of us listening is you've got to implement. That's um, right. So maybe, for those of you listening, your, your actual task to implement is just to go to my website and actually download those free resources. So that's right. And so, they, let me tell you something. I'm going to do it. So <laughs> I, okay. they should do it too. I'm going to do it. So I'm excited, Maria. I'm so happy that, you know, you actually said yes. And, you know, I love the fact that you had systems in place for us to kind of get it together rather quickly. You were very organized. Like, oh, I have a link for that. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. She has a link. So let's get it done. And I mean, everything was just so smooth. I love Thank that. You, you know. Thank you. That's good that. feedback. Yeah, everybody should be so organized and, you know, just so on top of it. And I mean, and you were definitely on top of it. And I love that. So thank you so much for saying yes to this interview. Thank you so much. I consider everyone that comes on the platform to be a part of the family. So I want to say welcome to the Network for Women in Business family. And, you know, don't be surprised when I send out this email that you start getting all these downloads, <laughs> you know, when I put the podcast out there, because um, this has been great. I love your energy. And, you know, I could just tell that everything, you know, you said was just spot on tonight. And, I'm just excited. Thank you. My gosh, you're making me blush. <laughs> but I'm blushing over here. Thank you so much. I have to compliment you just as an interviewer. You're, you're very poised. You get right to the heart of the matter. And I think that's a skill um, that not everyone has. So I, you know, I'm on a lot of podcast interviews, but I really just appreciated how you fostered the flow of conversation. So yeah, I definitely don't think I can take all the credit for this podcast. You definitely played a huge role in it. So thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Maria was great, wasn't she? I truly enjoyed doing this interview with her. She was a lot of fun. I want to remind you and make sure that you subscribe, rate, and review this podcast and make sure that you share it with others. And also visit us online at www.thenetworkforwomeninbusiness.com and learn how you can become a member today and take advantage of our small business university where you can discover a multitude of courses that will help you grow your business. Take care and I'll see you guys on the next episode.